afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Um, here with us, we have head coach Gary Smith who will uh, recap today's uh, victory. Um, we will give you the permission. We will give you permission to replay uh, today's victory. Well, it goes without saying we're, we're, we're all very, very pleased that we've got our first win on the board. But I, I think it runs a little bit deeper than that, as everybody, I'm sure, will uh, agree. This is a, a very, very good New England team. And the guys have executed a plan today extremely well. There have been some gargantuan performances from individuals that have not necessarily had the greatest of weeks through some uh, uh, illness and recovering from injuries. Uh, it, it's, I think it really typifies the, you know, the determination and the, uh, the spirit of the group. But all in all, from start to finish, I felt as though the guys went about their business with not just the right attitude, but an edge and a will that really upset and um, didn't allow an, a New England side with a tremendous amount of talent to find any rhythm. And that was a key component to, to finding a victory today. We will now open the floor for questions. Uh, Tim Sullivan with Fort Club and Country with the first one. Gary, uh, formation change, some personnel changes today. Was that game plan stuff? Was that because of who you did or didn't have available? What was kind of behind the, the tactical approach that you took today? Yeah, um, I, I'd, I'd been thinking about and looking at playing the front two um, for, for a little while. Uh, when I say a little while, you know, um, a week or 10 days and thinking about what that might, what that might present and represent for the team. And... I knew Hanny was struggling with a, a little bit of a sore hamstring, wasn't quite sure what would happen. So it, it just lent itself to thinking about forwards, what would the team look like and how would we prepare for that? Um, and, we, and we have plenty of competition up there. I, I know not all of our forwards are fit, but we've got some very uh, capable and, and uh, talented forwards ourselves. And it seemed and, and set itself just about right for the two forwards that, that play today and what they might offer us. But as I said at the very start, we had a plan in mind and it was, it was very much reliant on the front two being a threat beyond, working together, you know, giving us some traction up top from the very outset because we have had two or three games here where we've not started with uh, the sort of energy and the sort of edge that we've we've seen over a period of time now. And today was completely different. Steve Cavendish with Nashville team. Uh, thanks, Gary. Uh, how important was this win? You got three points from an opening in the opening of the home stand against some some of the lesser teams in the league did you need to beat a really good new england side today and and secondly can you talk about uh having cj uh starting and uh put it inserted into the starting lineup yeah first and foremost the the victory was of course very important to us it, it's always difficult when you get a, a top heavy home schedule like this it doesn't happen very often I've spoken about the circumstances leading us into these four games. But what I'd like to think everyone can see is a, is a, a progression and, and a, you know, a development and, 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 and creative edge in this group that maybe we didn't see last year. Aside the victories, I think we've performed in a, in a very decent fashion and really and truly may have taken one of, of the previous three games. But th this, for me, was always going to be the toughest of the four, um, just on paper, of course, to begin with, because of the way that New England performed last year. But having watched the opening fixtures, uh, I genuinely felt that this team that we were playing against were the most complete group that we've run into so far. And, and that's, that's not meant to be demeaning in any way to any of the other groups because they have, you know, some serious qualities themselves. But when I say complete, I've seen this team fight. I've seen this team work. I've seen this team create. 
They've got a very, very good balance. And I think leading into the game, they should have felt incredibly confident about their form. So it was always going to be a really, really tough game. One that maybe we could measure ourselves against. And of course, desperate to, to get ourselves a win as well. So, you know, it's, it's all turned out how we, we might have wanted it. And I think we've, you know, we've put ourselves in a very decent position. David Schaefer with, uh, with uh, SP Whistleper. Uh, Gary, from up here in the box, it looked to be the most complete performance from uh, Dax and Godoy in midfield. Was that specific to the game plan today, or uh, was that just something that, you know, those guys were going to come good eventually and it enabled everybody else to play a bit better? Well, I've got to say, I, I thought they were possibly our two best players last week against Miami. Um, the, the, the pair of them are slowly but surely getting themselves into uh, a, a nice rhythm and groove. Of course, it's important when you know when you take out Hanny, who's, who's a terrific connector um, and, a, and a very good link from midfield into that front line or attacking transitions. There was always going to be you know a few teething problems. I felt, but you know when you look at the experience that these two guys have, what I think we're seeing throughout the group is a familiarity now with match day, sharpness needed, mental attitude needed, continual focus in the game. And they're all things that unfortunately through pre-season we were unable to um, manufacture because of, of some of the problems we had. Um, my, my biggest um, enjoyment out of today's game is that we continue to improve and we continue to, uh, you know, to perform at a particular level. Today was one. We've kept a clean sheet. We keep our unbeaten run going. Um, but, but I think most of all, we maintain a level of performance. And it's not that we haven't been able to do that in the previous games, but there, there, were, there were some areas in our game, as we all well know, that, that weren't quite where they should be. Ben Dudley, uh, with another example. Hey, Coach. Um, as Davey mentioned, a great game by Dax. Um, what does it mean to this club to have the captain come out last week, say that he uh, believes in this club, that they can do better, and then comes out and has an incredible shift like he does and leads this team to victory? Uh, you know, I I'm not too sure there's, there's many other words I can use to describe that. He's, you know, his experience is invaluable. When guys get to the to the latter stages of their career, they can be forgiven for, you know, during the week not working as hard, having the odd day off um, that the you know the 21 and 22 year olds have got to, you know, to really toil through. You know, this guy typifies everything that this team is about. He's he's got a great attitude daily. His personality is infectious. He's a, he's a terrific footballer. I do think he's adapted his game from the first time I saw him, um, you know, in, in uh, my first stint in MLS. He's, you know, he's so thoughtful with his techniques and his talent. And, you know, he's, he's able to adapt to so many situations. And he's still a tremendous competitor. Um, you know, I've seen many an experienced player who, who won't put his foot in at these stages of his career because of... Of, of maybe the uh, the possibility of injury and missing some games, but th th this guy is is a top top professional. Um, today just underlines that and reinforces what we all know anyway. Great heels with Yeah, Gary. I mean, with, with Alex. I mean, it seemed obviously he was back again on the other side, um, playing on the left, but. With addition to the work that he did, really being a pest for Tejan Buchanan, obviously he got the goal. Um, what have you seen just from his adaptability, um, being able to to switch sides and obviously put a little more spark into the attacking side as well? Uh, Alex is an invaluable member of this group uh, for for all of those points. He's able to, you know, play in many different positions. He's very versatile. You know, it's it's difficult to maybe point someone out who has a, a bigger capacity for um, for workload than Alex. 
So you know what you're going to get, both sides of the ball. And he has worked tremendously hard at his attacking side of the game, um, his individual plays, his individual moments. Uh, you know, in the first half, he, he got himself in a 1v1 situation. And I know he's been working tirelessly with Steve about just shifting and getting shots off. The one that he pulls to the near post and just misses the target. But he's constantly trying to get himself in those attacking positions. I, I think that's an area of his game, certainly, that he needs to upgrade. And today, and I think in the games that we've seen him, he's slowly but surely doing that. I'm delighted that he scored his first goal. Um, what you know is you're just going to get a, a, a tireless worker and a great teammate. Um, you know, for the, for for even the the minimal foundation from Alex, what we're starting to see now is him adding to that quality and adding to the dimensions of his game, and that can only be bigger for him and for the team. Thank you, Coach. Uh, we will be joined by Dominic Badinet next. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we are joined by uh, forward Dominique Baggi. Uh Welcome, Dominique. Uh, tell us about how does it feel to be back on the pitch and uh, to have a victory. Feels amazing being back. It's been a very long time since I've had this feeling. Um, great to be back. Great to be able to do what I love doing. And on top of that, get three points for the team. Uh, definitely set the tone for how we want to be for the rest of the season. And I'm excited to have been part of it. Thank you, Don. We will now open the floor for questions. A reminder to the media to please allow me through the chat if you have a question for Don. Uh, and we will kick it off with Tim Sullivan with Four Club and Country. Tom, it seems like uh, both you and CJ early in the game were able to uh, find space in behind, especially the fullback. Seemed like you guys were playing wide. What did you see as, as the early stages of the game played out and did you kind of know that the offensive explosion was coming to, uh, today? Yeah, for sure. Uh, me and CJ are a handful up top, um, you know, alone and put us together. It's an even bigger problem. We have speed. We're able to hold the ball up with strength and can challenge for anything. And so seeing what they brought to the game uh, and how they like to play, we definitely saw that we could exploit going in behind. And so we did that and caused them a handful all game. David Shepard with uh, Speedway Soccer. Hey, CJ. Uh, first, congrats getting back out there on the field. Hey, what was it like today? Probably your first time uh, in front of a, a crowd since the, the opener against uh, Atlanta last year. What was it like being back in front of the fans here in Nashville and just seeing that full crowd out there today? Uh, this is Baji. This isn't CJ. I'm sorry, sorry, man. Sorry. I was just sending the last tweet out. Sorry. No problem. Um, it was great. It was nice being in front of the fans. Um, Obviously, you can't replicate that first game that we had at home, but having the fans back here definitely gives us that extra bit of energy that we need you know, when we're down or we need a little bit of oomph coming in. So having the fans there was great, and we're looking forward to having a lot more home games with more fans. Thank you, Tom. We'll continue with a question from Grayfields with the Tennessee Apple. Yeah, similar to, to uh, Davey's question, but or excuse me, Tim's question, but you've been working as one who's really at the at the top of the of the of the shape for Nashville, and usually the one one striker up top. And um, even going back to your your games last season, I mean, the fall, you know, that was still something that, that you were working with um, as far as being that sole guy. How did you see your game transform a little bit? You were able to try some different things when you got the ball in possession, just because, as you said. You know, they had to deal with CJ as well. So that's a little bit less attention. You could probably get those 1v1 situations. Is, is that your preference? Or, or what, what? how did you feel about that? Um, I've actually never really played with two forwards before in my career. Um, but having done that today, it seemed natural out there. It seemed like me and CJ had been doing this for a while. We've been working together, even though this was our first time. But like you say, it's easier to share the load where, you know, he can run behind and I can check in and, when I've got energy, I can run in behind, he can check in. And so we can kind of share the load. Um, and so that's what we did all game and able to have a lot of success. Claudio Villalobos with Nashville Torres Sports. 
Dominic, um, give us give us a sense uh, of, of yourself as a player um, when you, after all this going through in, uh, and not starting, and then all of a sudden you come in the pitch and you perform the way you did today. How inside a player, what's the feeling of of uh, of, of thinking that uh, you were successful on whatever you planning to do or the coach asked you to do today? I think it's a testament to how I am, you know. Obviously, every player wants to play. Every player wants to start. Um, realistically, it's not going to happen. But as long as you're mentally ready, physically ready, and you're doing everything you need to do, so when you get the call, you're ready, um, you'll be good. You know, I've been preparing a while for this. I've wanted this opportunity. It was given to me, and, you know, I tried to make the most of it. Obviously, I want to score. That's my job. But if I can't, um, I want to affect the game in different ways, like today. Thank you, Don. We will be joined next by CJ Sapon. Welcome back, everyone. Here with us, uh, we have CJ Sapon, uh, the goal scorer of tonight's uh, of today's game. CJ, how did you feel to finally uh, score a goal and uh, and to get a win for the for the club? Yeah, every everything you said there just sounds amazing. You know, when I knew I was coming to this team, my goal was to score goals and, and bring wins. So obviously with the first three games, we didn't lose, but we didn't win. And, um, you know, coming into the starting lineup, my first and uh, first and foremost, I just want to bring energy to the team. And, you know, when the game's over to be able to see myself on a stat sheet and see us have three points, it feels really, really good. And it's obviously more motivation to, to continue that, that same vibe. Congratulations. We will now open the floor for questions and uh, we will kick it off with Steve Cavendish uh, from the Nashville scene. Uh, thanks. CJ, when did you know you were going into the uh, starting lineup and did it change uh, anything about how you approached uh, the game today? Uh, yeah, so I uh, found out yesterday and, you know, for me, this is my 11th year in the league. I, I train and, you know, I approach every weekend, whether I'm on the starting lineup or, you know, I, I've had many moments in my career where, you know, an injury happens in warm up or even in, you know, early stages of the game. So I'm always approaching it the same way. The difference I would say is just maybe a little bit more in the meditation and, you know, trying to visualize myself, um, you know, right off the bat, bringing energy for the guys and um, us as a group collectively having a good performance and, and ending with a win. Team Sullivan with Fort Club and Patrick. CJ, when you saw uh, Lovitz put the ball in the air to Walker, what's going through your mind? How are you uh, kind of processing that uh, goal scoring play as it unfolds? Yeah, so, you know, when you see that ball go over your head, first inclination is just to get towards the goal. I didn't even know Walker was over there until I turned around. And once I saw him, I knew, okay, there's a high chance, high possibility that this ball is coming uh, back across the face of the goal. And, and once it did, you know, obviously it's just get a touch on it. Um, you know, but, you know, I saw Dom next to me as well. So I, I feel like even if I didn't get there, he would get there. Again, it's just a good feeling on the field when you, you, you think you can see that your teammates are in positions to succeed and you, you see your, your teammates in positions to make you uh, look better. It, it just, again, it's an overall great vibe. And, you know, I was happy to be a part of it. Thank you, CJ. We will continue with a question from Jen Triestet with the Tunisian. Yes, CJ, you know, Nashville was obviously a, a, a defensive oriented kind of approach last year. Uh, when you sign on to join this team, were you expecting the, the approach tactically to be more offensively aggressive the way you guys have been through the first few games? Um, yeah, honestly, that's my game. And I felt that they wouldn't have brought me in here if they didn't see that as a, a possibility for the team. And like I said, when you have guys throughout the roster that can bring something different day in, day out, it allows me to kind of just embrace the role that I bring. I know you know, the energy I'm going to bring to a game. And I focus on that. And when I'm training, I, I have that in the back of my mind. And when you get your number called and, and you know that those are the qualities that they're looking for in a game, it gives you the confidence to just go out there and do what you, you've been doing. Great heels uh, also with the Tennessee and with the next question. Yeah, CJ, even with the, the brief minutes that you were getting the past few weeks, you've had like two and three chances 
each match where you were like either got a header or you got a foot on something that was was almost there. You almost got your brace in your first few games. So when you talk about your meditation, was that included as well? Just the fact that you've had progression, even with the the minimal time that you had on the field, was that maybe a confidence booster that you were almost there? Spot on, man. Spot on. Definitely a confidence booter booster. You know, there's sometimes you can play a whole 90 minutes and not get a chance. So for me to be able to come off the bench and find myself in the right position, maybe it's just a half second where maybe I could have made a better run. Maybe, you know, the timing was just a little bit off. But like you, like you said, you know, manifestation and meditation, when, when you feel that energy, it's a, it's a zone state and you're not really thinking. You just are kind of banking on, you know, the energy you put outside of this game to ensure that you'll be in the right place at the right moment. And when it, you know, happens like it did today, it, it's more motivation to, to stay on that track and, and obviously express the gratitude, you know, for that opportunity. Claudio Villalobos with Nashville Total Sports. Well, CJ, obviously the confidence that you uh, show anytime you come into the pitch, uh, even uh, as a substitute or today as a starter, uh, didn't happen overnight um, after all those 11 years. But how... How important it becomes when you know that you're facing the best team in the conference uh, as you were getting ready to come in. Yeah, so I've throughout my years have been in many positions, whether it's the bottom of the table, top of the table, the middle of the table. Um, the one thing that I've recognized throughout my years is that any given day, once the, the whistle blows, it's who wants it more and who in their preparation, you know, has taken into consideration all the minor details. And, you know, when you have a coach like Gary, that's making sure that we're paying attention to these things uh, during the week. And then you have a group of guys, you know, all around you, whether they're dressing, whether they're on the bench, whether they're on the field, everybody's pushing each other. And that's, for me, it's the optimum environment to succeed. And I ultimately felt with the lineup we came onto the field with, with the personnel we came onto the field with, um, that we had the better chance of winning. And it's a good feeling when you, you can kind of, uh, you know, overcome the odds like that. We will conclude today's availability with a question from Ben Dudley. Uh, hey, CJ. Um, you played uh, up top with Dom Baji, and then you later played up top with jean de Cadiz. Uh, talk about what the difference is uh, and their different styles of play and how that affects how you approach the game. Yeah, so, you know, Yonder with his big frame is a guy that you might want to have a little bit higher off the, up the field to kind of, you know, have a layoff or maybe, you know, have a flick. Um, Dom obviously can do those things as well, but he can also come underneath and, and make those runs into the channel. And, uh, you know, when I look at both those guys, ultimately, I just see qualities that at any given moment can, can provide an advantage for us. So for me, it's just staying as close to them as possible, um, making decisions off of their movements. And, you know, the more we're in those situations, the, the better feel we have for each other. And I think it's going to be really tough for defenses moving forward to have to adjust their game plan, knowing that, you know, you have these options, whether they're starting or, or coming off the bench. Congratulations, CJ, and thank you everybody for joining us today. We look forward to chatting.